Well, just making things a little bit more difficult. What if I need to do the retraction of a group of teeth, for example? We know that a group of, of teeth will present when they are tied together, but let's go deeper in this concept here. So what, how can I consider that a group of teeth may be seen as a body, one body, just one body? Is this something that we consider when we have, for example, 19, 17, 25, night eye, ligating the anterior segment, I'm applying the distal force. Can I consider that a body, one body being tied together, the six teeth at the same time being one body? No, we can't because in this case here, because of the gap that we have inside the slot, the play that we have inside the slot, the force that we are applying, the force that we are applying there will make that set of teeth give different movements, okay? So we are applying the force, we don't have the engagement, the complete engagement of the wire inside the slot. So we are just applying one force in one point, contacting one point without the couple, even the couple, you don't have it at some part of the moment, at part of this moment because we are just applying this kind of, this type of movement. So for considering this group of teeth as having one center of resistance, look at this. We need to have a rigid ligation. Look at this. So this is something that we need to have. For example, 1925, okay, we can consider stainless steel if we have good contact points or 2125. Yes, in the 2230 slot. In this case, you can consider that anterior teeth are together one body, and then we consider the center of resistance of this group of teeth together, okay? But sometimes we see that uh, mainly, of course, in the internet, in the social media, people using this concept in uh, in a wrong sense, like applying uh, in a 1725 night tie arch wire in a 2230 slot, and they're considering the center of resistance of that body together. But it's not true because of the system is not completely rigid, okay? It's not rigid enough, so we can't consider that. Again, again, one line of action. I want to apply Kleber this concept of, concept of one line of action. And uh, I don't want to think about torque. I don't want to think about the couple generated by the torque, meaning I don't want to even think about the moment of force ratio. I want to be simple. How can I do this? How can I retract into your teeth without this need of controlling the torque or controlling with loops the moment of the, 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 the loop for doing that. There is a way to do that. Yes, but of course, it's not mathematics. It's not something that we can uh, establish as rigid. Always do like this, 10 millimeters, eight millimeters, and I'm applying the force at that height and everything is going to be perfect. It's not. It's not. Again, you need to individualize. But of course, we know that when we apply the average uh, concept, in average will be okay. Everything's going to be okay. So let's go to the example. If I'm doing this, I'm applying the force, distal force retract into your teeth. I know that when I have a rigid ligation of anterior teeth, from K9 to K9, the center of resistance of those anterior teeth are approximately eight millimeters high, uh, high in relation to the center of the, the crowns. So if I'm applying this, I will insert my mini implant. In this case, it is necessary because I have, I don't want to have, I have, I need control, I need control, I need 
a good anchorage for this. So I'm applying the mini implant at approximately eight millimeters high, and I'm doing putting the force in the hook very horizontal, completely horizontal in relation to the uh, occlusal plane. But we have a tip here also. In this case, for having this, for having this outcome, I need to have a rigid ligation. So again, 1725 won't work, won't work. You lose inclination because of the plane side as well. And you're just pushing the teeth. So when you establish the couple, you start having a control, a type of control, not that good, but we start having it. But if we want to have the control state established since the beginning, we need to have a more rigid ligation, which is, well, 21, 25, stainless steel arch wire inserted in a 22, 30, 30 slot. So we have a rigid control. And if you do this, you don't even need to ligate anterior and posterior segments. You are applying the line of action of the force, moving one body that uh, the type of movement will be related to the center of resistance of that body. So now I'm moving the body distally using the line of action of the force passing through the center of resistance. So why do I need the ligation between anterior and posterior segment for that? We don't, because doing that, we are having more friction. So I, am, I want to avoid this friction here, okay? No inclination, of course. Again, this is not mathematics, this is just average, okay? In average, it will work, but if we need to adjust, we can adjust. We can change the line of action of the force, we can apply torque, we can control everything during the movement, okay? So here it is, the situation, the, the clinical case, Okay, leveling and aligning. Look at this wire here. Mm, 21, 25. Look at the thickness of this arch wire. And here we have approximately eight millimeters high. Line of vector of the force, eight millimeters high in relation to the center of the crowns. In this case, I'm doing eight teeth together. And then finishing with the, the uh, loop that I use for losing anchorage, if you give me the pleasure to be with me in uh, Cairo, I'm gonna show all these loops to you. I'm sure this is something, uh, there was a question about, it's very common actually to have this type of question, my friends. Uh, someone asked me, professor, do you think I'm just in the beginning of my career as an orthodontist, I'm finishing or the middle or the beginning of my uh, program, post-graduation program. Do you think uh, this is a course for me, this immersive course, three-day course, is it for me? What I say is if I had the opportunity in the beginning of my career to see this when I was in my residency program, wow, my life, I promise you, would be much, much, much easier because I had to struggle to Learn that, having my problems, my mistakes, and trying to overcome those mistakes, understanding at the moment at the, at, I was seeing those mistakes. So this is very, very important for me. You know, the most beautiful thing in my career is having the opportunity to do this, that I'm doing now with you, that I'm doing when I, when I travel. I, I, I have this passion for teaching for seeing people, wow, now I'm more relieved, relieved because I can do that. I've seen those cases going wrong, but now I know how to deal with it. And this is something that I really, I, I really love to see in my students' face, my friends' face. Students, because now I'm in the position of being a professor, but I, I really, really love to teach people, to teach my friends the right way to do things. And uh, this is something I'm blessed. I, I consider myself blessed because I have this opportunity. 
So I've been doing this, as I told you before, uh, since the beginning of my, my, my uh, practice in orthodontics, I was trying to find ways to overcome my problems. So uh, back there in 2004, I started doing this a uh, long, long time ago. I was just like four years of practice and uh, or more than that, a little bit more than that. I was seeing my cases going wrong, many, many difficulties, especially in periodontal losses, patients with periodontal losses. I was seeing those cases going wrong. And I started thinking, what can I do? Well, um, higher line of action or the force will help me because in this case, if I, I'm not applying the line of action of the force at the level of the crown, I don't need to have a high torque to control the high moment generated by the force. Why is that? Because I'm passing the line of action of the force at the level of the center of resistance, you know? And I can't do that because nowadays, at that time, I was starting to work with mini implants. 2002, 2001, I was starting to work with mini implants. I have a book on that, uh, 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 a chapter of a book that I wrote in 2004 about the use of implants, mini implants, mini plates in orthodontics at Zanchorage. And uh, I start seeing that, well, I don't need to apply a high torque if I don't have a moment. I don't generate a moment. And the way to do that is the thinking of one line of action passing close or through the center of resistance of anterior teeth. Because at that time, the only way to do that was using this concept, using the uh, high line of action. So I had two articles on which I did this. It's published in 2007, but yes, of course, I started doing that um, some, years, some years ago. And two articles, uh, uh, showing the way to do this. And this is what I do. I apply a line of action of the force at a high position, at a high uh, distance in relation to the center of the ground. So I'm not generating a moment or at least a high moment. Because you understand that if I apply the line of action of the force at the level of the crown, I have to multiply the force I'm applying here by this, the distance between this point, this line of action, and the center of resistance of anterior teeth, in this case, a higher position of the center of resistance in relation to the center of the crown. Why? Because I'm dealing with periodontal compromised patients. And now I don't need to apply this torque, guys, because I can apply a high line of action on the points, okay? So this is one case in which I treat it this way. This is in the article. This case is shown in this article, okay? And here we have it. Look at this. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have time to update this presentation here. Well, yes, you can see the, the outcome, even still with Brecht's position. And here we have it. Look at this. Keeping the attachment, the bone attachment, and with a good control during the movement.